Hey, book club, Mr. Klingon back here with another lesson for us. Um, so if you remember uh, the last lesson that we had, we were kind of starting some work about really diving in to um, history's connection with our historical fiction books and, um, you know, looking at some, some real information that'll help us better understand um, the, the setting and the events that are going on in our historical fiction texts. So, Today, um, I want to teach you about how, you know, when you're reading a, a book that has real historical information in, in it, um, you can almost think about like, like that reading is almost like a, like a little project that you're working on. And, you know, yes, you're, you're reading your text, your chapter book or whatever, but you also often do some background research to, to give you some more information and help you understand the book even better. Um, now, some authors, um, like the author of this book, I read this to my class, it's called A Storm Called Katrina. It's about Hurricane Katrina. Some authors include background information um, in the text themselves. So this is a fictional story. It's historical fiction about Hurricane Katrina in 2005. But the author does include, at the end of the story, some real information, some real pictures, that help us kind of understand what Hurricane Katrina was actually like. Okay. Um, but not all stories do that. So sometimes we have to go and build our background knowledge ourselves. So we might have to look um, and try to find articles online that give us some background information. Um, we can look at maps to help us understand. Um, and we're going to be definitely doing that today because um, our uh, read aloud number of the stars doesn't have any maps in it um but they, they do talk about different countries a lot um also timelines that show how um, different historical events progressed over time can help us understand history and, and the events going on in our story better too so what good readers do is you know as they're reading their stories they might get to a part where they're getting a little bit confused you know what's going on here i don't fully understand this um you know, I know I'm the author's trying to give me some real historical information, but I might have some holes in my knowledge because I just don't know a lot about this event. So then good readers go looking for some nonfiction information. Remember some articles, some maps, timelines, and you try to find, you know, what part of that article, that timeline is going to specifically give you information that you need to help understand your story better. And then you go back to the book and you remember that information in your mind and you understand your story even better. So I'm going to give you an example about this. Um, so I was doing some, some background research about um, King Christian X and um, what Denmark was like during the, um, the invasion by the, the German army, the Nazi soldiers. Um, and now, first of all, I want to point out... Um, because not all information that you find online is, is good. Um, I know this is a pretty good uh, website because it's, it's a website from a museum. And uh, museums um, are, are definitely trustworthy places that give you good information. So um, when I was looking through this article, I was looking for information about, about what it was like um, to be, uh, to be in, in the war. I was looking for information about um, how the, the king was able to protect the Jewish people. Um, and then specifically, I wanted to see a map to see what, what this area looked like because um, they keep talking about different countries. So I found this map down here that shows, so here's the country of Denmark and it shows the country of Sweden right next to it because they keep bringing up Sweden in this story. OK, and how it's neutral, which means the Germans did not invade it, whereas Denmark is occupied, which means the German soldiers are there. And I was looking at this map and I noticed, oh, Gelelihi, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but that's the town that Uncle Henrik lives in. That's the town that Anne-Marie and her mom and Kirsty and Ellen um, went to to stay with their Uncle Henrik. And I see this map has like arrows pointing from Galelihi to Sweden. So that's starting to get me really thinking about how 
the, uh, the Danish people were able to save the Jews from the Germans. Okay. And I want to give too much away because we're still reading this story, but hopefully your mind is thinking about how these um, Danish Jews were rescued from the Germans. Okay. Now, today we're going to do something similar um, with uh, our book club book, Just Call Me Joe, um, which which talks a lot about the, the, the immigration to the United States in the late 1800s, the early 1900s. So in our seesaw assignment, I have a link here, and this is to National Geographic. Um, so again, this is a website that is has good information. This isn't just some random person putting random, you know, lies online. This is true stuff. And this map shows us um, kind of the, the immigration to the United States between 1870 and 1900. And that's around when our story is taking place. Okay. So I want you to click on the map. All right. And it opens up um, this map right here. I and mean, you can see there's arrows on it as well from different parts of the world. So you can read this little paragraph here, okay? Study this map, and then your job is going to be to respond in Flipgrid with something that you learned. Okay, what are you learning about immigration to the United States at the time that our book club book is taking place? Okay, so that's kind of the big question. What did you learn from studying the map? Of immigration between 1870 and 1900. Okay, what are some facts and pieces of information that you're learning um, about that immigration wave? Okay, so I'll um, look for your responses. Good luck.